I have started lately to experiment with Facebook ads and what I've been trying to do is I've been trying to publicize and reach out to a specific type of audience. Uh, this audience are the people that are usually the family of Muslims or new uh, Muslims, the people that have recently reverted or converted to Islam. Um, and I'm not reaching out to them uh, for this course because with the aim of converting them. Um, as a matter of fact, what I am trying to do is that I have been trying to put a course together in order to help increase awareness about the faith of Islam. Um, and the, the purpose of that is to mitigate this potential conflict that can or and does happen in most scenarios where one of the family members ends up converting to Islam. So I have prepared these ads and I have uh, launched them on the Facebook platform. And some of the people that are seeing the ads are people that are not my audience. And they're very, very opinionated and they have been sending some very difficult to read uh, messages um, in response to these ads. Now, it's very easy for me as an individual right now, knowing that those are not my potential audience and knowing that they are just trolling my, my, my page and my ads to respond uh, in a very aggressive way. But one thing that kind of hold me back is thinking about the idea of role models. Uh, are, are role models important and why are they important? Um, and in Islam, role models are very important. As a matter of fact, what the scholars said, they said that the holy book, the Quran, in its linguistic perfection and in its um, eloquence and in its delivery of the message, that is the miracle that Islam came uh, with. However, uh, for people that do not or are not able to access the Quran, the holy book in its original language, they might be veiled from all those intricacies initially until they read some of the exegesis that are out there, some of the translations and interpretations that are out there. And hence what the scholars said, they said that the Quran is the miracle of Islam. However, the prophet, peace be upon him, is the miracle of Islam for people who do not have access to the Quran. And the reason for that is that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as uh, one, of, uh, one of the companions said, uh, his wife uh, said, that كان قرآنا يمشي على الأرض. He was a Quran, he was the holy book walking on earth. And this is a metaphor that he was an implementation of the Quran, of the holy book. And hence, he is the role model that this religion and this faith and this uh, religious book can be implemented by human beings. It's not something that is beyond the reach of human beings. The Quran does not include only that as an example. It includes many other examples about how important it is to, ha to have a role model. One of the examples is with the Prophet of God, the Honorable Prophet and Messenger of God, one of the uh, five um, highest uh, prophets in honor, uh, the Prophet Musa salam, Moses peace be upon him. Moses uh, peace be upon him when he went to face the Pharaoh um, in a, a match that happened that the Pharaoh uh, kind of called for um, in order to have the magicians compete with Musa peace be upon him uh, because Musa had the staff that turned into into the, the, the snake as well as he had some other uh, miracles. So the Pharaoh said, okay, well, this is magic. I'll bring you the best magicians. And those magicians, when they came to the Pharaoh, they the first thing they asked is that, you know, Do we have or are we going to get a reward if we actually won this match? They were purely focused on this life, on the worldly aspect and the physical reward of their lives. They were not thinking at all about, a con about the concept of the afterlife or about the concept of the divine or about the concept of the metaphysical, nothing about that. They know amongst themselves and they know that Pharaoh is not a divine 
the Pharaoh was claiming that he is the divine and they knew that he is not. He's just a human being. But in order to play this game of deceiving people, the people of, uh, of Egypt, they said, okay, well, we'll play this game, but we want some return, some financial and some other types of reward. So the Pharaoh tells them, of course, you're going to get your reward. And on top of that, you're going to be very close to me. So you will get not only the financial reward, you will get also the social status. Now, imagine those people that have approached this issue with this mindset. It is very difficult to change. Just like, you know, when I'm seeing those messages of people that are approaching my ad in a very harsh way, it is very difficult to change the perspective about Islam. So if somebody that they know converts to Islam, they're going to give them such a hard time. So it makes you kind of wonder, okay, well, what, what happened with those magicians? The magicians with uh, Musa, with, Mo with Moses, peace be upon him. So what happened is that they saw Musa alayhi salam. Musa uh, was standing in front of them and he was standing in absolute honor and confidence and he played the game. And when he played the game, he won that game. He was an example that was better than them at the game. He was an example of the best char character that they have met. And hence, they instantly changed. They went from being completely physical and worldly to being divine and focusing on the hereafter. As a matter of fact, they immediately prostrated to God, to the true one God. Um, and they left the Pharaoh and the Pharaoh said, what are you guys doing? I brought you here to support me and you do this uh, in front of everybody. This is in, indeed plotting that you have done prior to starting this match in order to deceive people. And he actually ended up torturing them and killing them. But what's really interesting about this story is how did they change 180 degrees instantly? That change in and within itself, the scholars spoke extensively about. And they said that what helped them change was seeing a role model in front of them. They saw a real person, not something that is theoretical. They saw a real person who is well behaved, who has good manners, and who was really, really good at what he did. And he was really good at the game that they're playing. So that allowed them to change 180 degrees instantly. It didn't take years, it didn't take uh, months, it didn't take weeks, it didn't even take days. It just happened instantly. And what tends to happen in most of the impact that happen on an individual, it happens because of those relationships. Somebody might have a relationship with somebody else who is, who acts as a role model for that individual and that causes an instant change. So you see, for example, some of the coaches, if that coach was very good and he was a, or she was a good role model, you find that they're able to change the life of the individual almost instantly. And this is why having a good role model is very important in Islam. And that's why Islam focuses on building the role model. Now, it is very difficult to find somebody who is perfect or even near perfect. That is impossible. And what tends to happen is that those imperfections result in people blaming the faith. They're saying, okay, this person is not adhering to the faith. So the faith must be wrong. And actually some of the messages that I have been getting f due to the ad is that people say that, hey, I knew a Muslim who used to drink and who used to party and do all these things and they still pretend to be Muslims. And this is an obvious fallacy because they're expecting a perfect human being. There is no perfect human being. But it is important also for somebody who is trying to be influential or who is trying to claim that they are a manifestation of a certain ideology, it is important that they try to focus on developing themselves and building better, a better character. 
I hope this was helpful and let me know if you have any questions and I will see you in the next lesson.